to Smallville Fanatic Reviews. I've had lots of coffee today. This is Season 1, Episode 15, entitled Nicodemus. It's James Beals. Lionel Luther is expecting my call. We begin with this guy called Beals. I don't care if he's in a meeting, get him out of it! Tell him I found something! No, I won't hold! Get him! I swear to God, Ian from Smosh was inspired by this guy! So Beals is in a crazy ass rage and is tailgating Jonathan Kent. Hey. Which ends in an implausible car crash. Someone should have told him not to put anti gravity in the gas tank. This whole scene is the first of several nods towards actor John Schneider's days in Dukes of Hazard, which apparently featured silly car action just like this. Jonathan carries Beale to safety. And of course the car explodes once or twice because anti-gravity can be quite volatile when stored upside down. Also, Beale's little plant magically transported from the car right next to them. Oh hey, a plant just sneezed on him! I wonder if that's relevant to the story in any way. I'd like to point out that Beals is played by Bill Mondi, who will eventually come back to play a completely different character, who's basically the exact same character, called Dr. Grawl. So the writers obviously regretted killing Beals later in this episode. Oh, did I spoil it for you? Shame. He also voiced a character in Crypto the Superdog. Can anyone say crossover? So Miles Dyson, oh hell, I'll just call him his correct character name, Dr. Hamilton, comes to speak to Lex. One of my experiments was stolen by one of your employees. Why would anyone at Luther Corp know about your work? He was helping me install some new equipment. What'd he steal? A flower. You're kidding. It's called the Nicodemus. It's been extinct for a hundred years. It was never really extinct then, was it? Now is it just me or does Dr. Hamilton sound like he's making all this up on the spot just because he's lonely or something and wants someone to talk to? What do you steal? A flower. You're kidding. It's called the Nicodemus. It's been extinct for a hundred years. What do you steal? A spoon. Made by the Egyptians. It's been extinct for... A million years. Uh-huh. I hired you to study the effects of meteors on this town. That is your focus, you're a geologist. Why are you wasting time bringing flowers back from the dead? I irradiated the dormant seeds with meteor fragments. I want to know the effects on people, not plants. Firstly, why would you start testing this substance on humans and not single-celled organisms, worms, or indeed plants? Secondly, why would you hire a geologist to study the chemical and physiological effects of this mineral on the human body? I think Lex has had one too many bumps to the head. Anyway, Clark walks in on his parents getting it on. I did not need to see that. <laughs> hey, son. Just get the old hero's welcome, you know what I mean? <laughs> What's going on with that? I don't know. He's been acting strange ever since he got home. Lex drops by and Jonathan uncharacteristically starts insulting him. In fact, if all of you Luthers were to dry up and die, I wouldn't shed a tear. Dad, it's enough. Clark tells Pete about this, and Pete clumsily exposits that he hates Lex. Why? What do you have against Lex? Hmm, let's see. He screwed my family out of the cream corn factory. Well, Pete, that was 12 years ago. And it wasn't him, it was his father. Yeah, Pete got screwed out of creamed corn! Remember, Smallville is the creamed corn capital of the world. After that, Chloe's taking a random poll, which conveniently and concisely iterates the theme of the episode. What's your deepest desire? I mean, if nothing was holding you back, what would you guys do? You know, every answer I've gotten so far has been either sex or violence related. That's human nature, Chloe. Oh, I wonder what kind of effect the Nicodemus plant has when it fires spores into people's faces. Did you know that Pete doesn't like Lex? Yeah, he's like totally jealous of your friendship with him. He feels like you guys aren't as close as you used to be. I wonder if Pete will later be affected by Nicodemus and try to attack Lex! <laughs> I'm setting this up so well! No one's gonna see this one coming! Uh... 
So what's Lana's deepest desire? I would climb the windmill down in Chandler's Field. Really? That's your deepest desire. Somebody told me you could see the Metropolis skyline from there. I haven't got the guts to climb up and see for myself. She's lucky she's got a hot ass. Okay, Clark, you're up. Ever since Winnie's father's been in the hospital, there's been a no fly zone on Lana. <laughs> It's funny because he said no fly zone and he can't fly. <laughs> Are you mocking me, Smallville? Elsewhere, Jonathan has become Randy to the point I'd rather not have to watch. What do you say you and I go up into the hayloft and have us a little fun, huh? <laughs> and then violent. That way I can see whether you still have a pair or whether your wife keeps them in a drawer too. <laughs> The phone's always the first to go! Mark sees his father out for a pleasant afternoon drive and follows him to find he's going to kill some people. I'm thinking just fine, son. Now get out of my way. He shoots Clark, which is pretty cool. And then passes out. At the hospital, the Kents are told that Jonathan's illness is unknown, but identical to James Beale's condition, who fell into a coma. Ergo, vis-a-vis -vis concordantly, Jonathan's in the shit if he doesn't get cured soon. Chloe and Lana investigate the car crash site for clues, and Chloe starts taking pictures. Lana walks for three seconds in a random direction, and lo and behold, just happens to find the Nicodemus, which is once again magically transported to another location. This continuity doesn't taste right. So the plant spurts in Lana's face. Let's get out of here, this place is a dead end. Hold on! Chloe gave up the search after exactly 65 seconds, of which she never moved from the middle of the road. And why did Lana not even mention the strange moving flower that ejaculated in her face if she's supposed to be looking for something that caused a strange medical condition? Anywho... Lex visits Dr. Hamilton with a book he found detailing the lore of the Nicodemus plant. Apparently in 1871, a strange contagion struck the Morley settlement and 200 people died almost overnight. A priest who witnessed the scene left a diary. His last entries describe how the settlers began acting out of character. He claimed the local flower was to blame. Elsewhere! <coughs> Lana develops a sex drive. Yeah, you dirty girl. But Whitney turns down some afternoon delight because he's gay or something, so Lana breaks up with him. It's over, Whitney. Yes! Yeah! 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 Bro. yeah! yeah! There's no one there. I was high-fiving no one. So Lana flaunts her sexy, sexy stuff at Clark and takes him to the pool. For the best, the best scene, scene in the, the whole, whole show, show ever! Finally kiss! And Clark falls into the pool, although I don't know how some skinny girl could push over Superman. Then she disappears! <coughs> Chloe's blind luck with photos from last week continues as she conveniently captured Dr. Hamilton skulking about in the woods. So off they go to speak to him. In the Talon! Lana comes on to Lex, who realizes she must be affected by Nicodemus. I'm not sure what this is, but it isn't you, Lana. Are you feeling okay?
She turns aggressive and steals his car, which Clark follows. Chloe confronts Dr. Hamilton, takes one glance at the book on his desk and somehow instantly realises it's relevant to the illness. I must be mistaken. Sorry to have bothered you. That's like if you were looking for a cure for cancer, came round to my house and saw I had a history of Egyptian spoons and thought, <gasps> He created cancer! So Lana attempts to climb that shitty windmill, because remember, that's her deepest desire, but she faints, so Clark takes her to the hospital. Chloe did some research on Nicodemus, fills the guys in, and because she's the world's greatest detective, discovered the local library gave a copy to Lex. Dr. Hamilton didn't check out the Nicodemus diary. Lex did. You think he's involved? I told you all along he was bad news. I'll call back. I just got off the phone with the doctors. They think they've isolated the problem. So Clark confronts Lex and gets pissed off when Lex blatantly lies about knowing Hamilton. Who's that? Don't lie to me! I'm not responsible for what happened and I'm doing everything in my power to fix it. Chloe and Pete break into Hamilton's lab and Pete wins the Dumbass of the Year award by straight up breaking open a Nicodemus container. Pete? <laughs> you looking for me? No. No we're not. He's also affected instantly. Oh, terrible. Pete finds a gun and takes Chloe's car keys so he can go kill Lex. Back at the hospital, Martha has some bad news for Clark. Clark, Mr. Beals died half an hour ago. Hamilton tells Lex he's discovered a cure, but Pete arrives to shoot the place up. Pete. Get out! Chloe alerted Clark, so he turns up and knocks everyone out, as usual. He's going to be the leading cause of brain damage before long. Everyone gets cured, and guess what? Dad, do you remember anything? No. Amnesia! Amnesia. Lex transfers Dr. Hamilton to a place called Cadmus Labs in Metropolis, which will feature heavily in the future. And Clark takes Lana up the windmill. Okay. Open your eyes, Lana. And while the set and computer effects here are atrocious, I'm more puzzled by how on earth he got her up there with his hands over her eyes. Clark, I didn't say or do anything embarrassing to you that I should know about. Did I? No space to win in this town. Also, she has amnesia, so we have to reset their relationship back to the way it was. Man, that was a long review. I think I need some fresh air. Oh, you're a lovely little flower. Yes, you are.
Fanatic. Fanatic. Fanatic! Give the old heroes welcome, you know what I mean? Oh.